It is 17 years since the Darfur conflict began in western Sudan, one that led to hundreds of thousands of deaths and charges of genocide against Sudan's former president. The worst of the violence was more than a decade ago, but the UK has granted asylum to some of those fleeing continuing instability there. Fergal Keane, who reported from Darfur in 2004, has been talking to two cousins who are from there and now find themselves on different sides of the channel. It is a story of numberless journeys. <laughs> driven by the enduring legacy of genocide. Journeys that bring some to refuge in Britain, while others languish in makeshift camps. It is the story of the lost sons of Darfur. The search at twilight for migrants waiting to cross the channel near Calais. We are facing uh, situations of despair, total despair, and they are very determined to cross because they, they are so uh, close to their goal. These are frequent hiding places, abandoned bunkers from the Second World War. These searches go on every night, and it feels pretty much like the game of cat and mouse that it's always been. The French government is devoting considerable resources to the searches, but the migrants keep coming. People fleeing war and economic hardship who are still convinced that across the channel, a better life awaits. But if, like 16-year-old Mantasser, you've survived genocide, then almost any journey of escape can seem worth it. Along with others from Darfur, he's determined to get to Britain. Life is hard after genocide, he told me. The situation is very hard. I just want security, stability and education. This was Mantasser at home near the Darfur town of Nyala, where he was born in 2004 and where his father was murdered in the genocide. I was in the town the year he was born and met some of the victims of state terror. Right in front of our eyes, the police have been raiding houses here. We've seen them beating people and we've been told by a police commander that they want all of the people to move from here to a new camp. The genocide left hundreds of thousands dead, more than a million displaced, a legacy of instability and economic crisis which has continued despite a new government. That set Mantasser on his journey to Europe. Following so many others, he crossed the expanse of the Sahara, a journey of over 8,000 kilometers over two years, during which he was detained in Libya before eventually reaching Europe. We experienced beatings, jails, humiliation, he says. I worked to earn money to pay my way to Europe, but they stole it. But he has hope that he can hide aboard a truck or beg a place on a boat. So close, the lights of England, where he has a vital connection. Yeah, Montasir, my brother, is long time, I never know you, long time. Living in Manchester, Isam Nada is Montasir's first cousin. He's had refugee status for the last two years. Isam has worked 12-hour shifts in warehouses and studies English by night. Are you happy in Britain? Yeah, I'm happy, very happy. This is very, very, very happy. I've been great, very happy. Why? Yeah, for Darfur, it is, if we need to walk, it's dangerous, never know. Here it is great, here peace, people look nice, everything. The story of the cousins is the story of so many of the sons of Darfur, whose lives were overturned by genocide. For Mantasser, stuck for now in Calais, there's no going back. Fergal Keane, BBC News, Calais.